Guild Wars 2 is a very old game. That means that it's not very optimized. Therefore, getting you the right settings and maybe using some software to make the FPS on your game better is something that is very, very welcome. Especially when you like seeing some people's fashion and you don't want to have everything on the lowest so you can't see anyone around and you just see nameplates that are in Vessel. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the things that I know that I use as well uh, to make my FPS a bit better. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Go to my Ko-Fi if you want to support my content and appear on the board. Go to my Twitch to watch me live and let's get into it. First, let's go through the basics. We have some very cool, innovative stuff at the end, but first let's go through the basics because this is going to be very important for you. Settings. Uh, in settings, there's going to be a lot of things that you can actually go for. Uh, most of the things here don't really matter. Uh, everything you can put it on lowest, and you know, if you have a very, very bad computer, this will help. But honestly, having animations as high is not going to do anything. Anti analyzing is not really that big of a deal, but it can. Uh, let's maybe leave it on none. Environment. It's really not that big of a deal as long as you have an okay GPU. Load distance is kind of useful. You want to put it on low unless you have a very specific type of situation where you want to see everything outside of you, uh, you know, very, very far away. Uh, otherwise, put it on low. Reflections should always be unknown because this will make it so the water underneath the ground, the uh, lightning effects, even in caves or whatever, will not actually appear. Therefore, your computer will not be dead because they're loading things that they shouldn't be loading. Render sampling, once you have it on nat native, uh, doing anything else uh, will make it so it becomes a bit um, a more expensive for your CPU. If your GPU is very bad and you actually your CPU is better, then maybe this is actually correct to put subsample. It looks a bit weird. I actually kind of like the way that it looks on subsample, kind of blurry. I think it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of nice, but not everyone agrees with me. Uh, and you should have a native most of the time. Shadows are non, uh, if you want big DP, uh, FPS. Shadows always require so much CPU. And this game is Omega. It's, it's so CPU intensive. They don't really use the graphic cards that much. Shaders, honestly, it's whatever you want. If you, want a, if you have a low-end GPU, low is the best for sure. But for me, uh, honestly, and in any normal GPU, high or medium will be fine. Now, here's when we start getting into the important part. Character model limits and character model quality. These two settings are super important. What they do is you can see here that this little character on this side, almost like a template of a char. Uh, and this is because I have character model limits on lowest and quality on lowest. What the quality uh, does is that it will actually, you know, consider how much it will render. How many people will have a high quality character? Lowest is going to be almost essentially no one. Low is going to be just some people, specifically also the person that you actually click on. Um, Medium will be even further, and then highest, uh, high and highest will be the best, right? To get everything in, right? And of course, this will also load in different other, uh, well, this guy's just changing their outfit. I mean, absolutely memed. Well, regardless, uh, <laughs> the point is that it loads more people, right? And their models. And then if you go for character model limits, this will essentially show the amount of models, even templates that they show. If you have everything on lowest, guess what? Some people will not even appear. You can see that person there. There's no temp there's no um, template for the character. It's just a nameplate. So you have everything on medium, you start getting even more of these little guys, right? So combining this together to get what you want is uh, the best way of doing it. You know, you don't want to see anyone, like everyone just disappear. You want to see some uh, character models. And honestly, I like the idea of going character model quality low. So that way you have some people that you actually see, some name blitz, but if you want to see them, you can just click on them and it will load it for you. I think this way is way, way, way better. That being said, if you're really having a lot of FPS issues, lowest is the best. Best texture filtering, only if you have a very good, um, what's the word? If you got a good GPU and you want to see everything correctly. Effectively is very important. This will limit the uh, particle effects from other players. You want to have this on at all times, otherwise your computer will explode, regardless of what happens. Uh, even if you have, maybe if you have the, a NASA computer, then maybe this is correct. Uh, but most of the time, this will not be good. Uh, maybe playing PvP is okay, so you can see everyone's, um, everyone's abilities, but otherwise, yeah, not really. Harris characters, textures, you know, S, hey, your NPCs will have a better player character models. And of course, the players as well. But of course, this is going to be, you know, taking a little bit of your processing power. Post processing, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Just get what you want. I like this setup, but you can just customize it the way that you want. Death Blur, honestly, doesn't really do anything. I should just uh, not get that light adaptation. We'll actually get a little bit of your graphic card and I'm in occlusion is the same, but you can just, it doesn't really affect you too much. The only thing that you should be thinking about everything else is not that important although actually my bad 
in options if you go here to the bottom and you go to groups you're gonna see hide ally visual effects this will hide the visual effects from your allies kind of like effect lod you can hide all this way you'll never see any of the effects from your party uh, but sometimes it'll also it'll also hide mechanics from bosses so be careful with this i personally put it on uh only show squad because that means that if i'm in a squad usually um a 10 on squad for raid i'll see everything uh and if i'm in randomly in a meta it's not really gonna be that important now where i am indeed in my own meta training in my squad i usually go hide all so i can get actual good fps but you know it's something you're gonna have to go in there and out and hopefully one day arinet gives us templates for configurations for different modes but that's what we have now let's move to the juicy stuff the new thing that i actually want to talk about right now is looseless scaling this feature this software will allow you to get 30 fps but it will look like 60. as you can see here on the top left you can see a 30 and a 61. this means that i am actually at 30 fps but it's upscaling it to 60 one fps i don't know 61 instead of 30 but regardless if you actually see here i have limited the frame limit at 30 and as soon as i actually on scale here you can see here that the you know specifically on this part you can see that the uh fps is way worse right it's it's just uh, it doesn't look as good but as soon as i press it boom it'll start upscaling it again and go to 60 fps just like you see this means that you can actually go and get your quality a little bit higher because the only thing that matters here is that your FPS doesn't go below 30. Usually in metas, you are around 60 and sometimes it goes to 40 and then back to 60 and it's kind of annoying. But if you look at a 30 and then upscale to 60, it can look consistently smooth. If you're having problems going lower than 30, then maybe this is not going to work as much. But if you can at least maintain a 30 FPS in 99% of the situations, this is going to work like a charm. For me, for example, now I can actually put character model limit and quantity on low and seeing other people's fashion without having any issues in FPS, specifically when I'm streaming. So it's actually very, very nice. It, the quality gets a little bit worse when I'm actually... um on stream and just because it started using a lot of my resources to do this uh, but overall for most of you guys it will not be an issue it's also kind of funny because in cinematics it actually upscales it from 60 fps to 120 some cinematics like the drones from one that is actually 30 fps looks super smooth because of upscaling it to 60 fps the only bad thing is that this uh feature this software is actually paid you have to pay for like around eight dollars or something from steam it's called loose scaling you can just look it up there it's very easy uh but it's definitely worth it and you can just go and try it out and if you don't like it just refund it they'll give you the money right away no pro no problems okay and you're gonna end up playing buying another game on steam eventually right those eight dollars won't get lost forever okay uh and of course the way that you actually do this and i have a whole video explaining the entire thing here uh but what you do is just use the settings that i have right here right now you have to have scaling tab on nis you have to have uh, everything here doesn't matter uh, frame duration it must be a 2.3 mode two times this means that it'll upscale your fps tw twice and the other thing that is very important is the capture api to be wgc this will allow you to have overlays for example blish hd won't work unless you have wgc enabled after that you're gonna have to go to um, your profile game profile go to edit and put uh, on filters the actual guild wars 2.exe you have to go into guild wars 2 and click on this one right so it actually only captures that specific game sometimes you get it a little bit bugged and blish hd is not showing you just go in here into the bottom here and click on blish hd uh, then cl click back into the game and it'll show up again do it a few times if it's not working and you'll be fine there are other things other settings uh if you don't want to deal with them they're pretty sim uh, self explanatory i'm going to explain them right now you can just skip to the next method as well but you have performance to make the performance of the uh, loose scaling a bit better even though it'll look a bit worse you have some things for your cursor clip cursor so it doesn't move out of the a game you have adjust cursor speed to decrease mouse sensitivity you have hide cursor so it doesn't show at all i don't know why you would do that but whatever you have scale cursor so it actually scales with your um scaling if you want to change uh, the scaling of your game you can make it have a different resolution for example um you have rendering sync mode sometimes and you can definitely see this right here on the game you can see that sometimes it looks a little bit like desynced uh, it gets a little of a vertical sync uh, those little like weird little things on the center of your character you can actually make that better uh we change this to whichever is going to end up looking better for you try every one of them uh but it'll actually make the um 
the latency a bit, uh, a bit worse. You can make the latency better to make um, bigger to actually make the sync a bit better. But obviously the latency is, you know, if you're playing PvP or Warper's World, it's going to be very, very annoying. You have HDR support if you have that. You have JSync support if you have that. You have draw FPS to see the little FPS on the top left corner. You have double buffering to stabilize frames if you're having a lot of issues with that. If you're going down and up and down and up a lot, it'll make you have a bigger latency, but it's something you can do. And then you have multi-display mode so you can actually move your mouse out of the application to some other monitor and windowed mode. Uh, but just put window mode, it makes uh, the Gears 2 work better for me at least. Uh, so just do that. And if you have any questions about this, uh, please leave into the comments down below. It's a great feature. I'm always using it almost every day now, especially on stream. Uh, I just, I'm so happy that I can actually play this game at 60 FPS. And if you want, you can, and you have a beast of a PC, you can get your 2 mode into from 60 to 120 and make the game look even more smooth. So. There you go. For the last one, which is something that the community did, and I think it's very cool, you can get Vulcan. This will almost uh, more, mostly work for people who have AMD GPUs um, more than anything. But as an NVIDIA user, I actually got a little bit of a performance um, upgrade with this. Uh, it won't work for everyone. Sometimes it even makes it worse, but you can install it and uninstall it afterwards if you so want. It's very easy. I'll leave in the description down below this entire forum post and it'll explain everything to you, but I'm going to go through it anyways. Here you have the uh, DXVK version that you want. Uh, this will get, let you have Vulkan um, in your game. You want to download it from this GitHub repository. You just go in here, press download version, uh, just download it, boom, ECPC, .gz, extract the, whatever is downloaded, and then you're going to have to copy the dxgai.dll and d3.11dll into your Gilbert's 2 folder. As you can see, I have them right here. I copied them into it. Now, this works with Nexus and RDPS as well. And what I did is I renamed my um, new add-on to d 3 d 11 underscore chainlot.dll and this will make it so this happens and that get, that gets chained into this and work are both are working together now very important um if something is going wrong you want to get the three d3 d11 that uh, underscore chainlot and the dxgidll into bin 64 want to copy it here as well and into the cef this will make it um this will fix it uh this was a problem that i was getting a lot of the time and eventually i talked to the guy who made this and he told me to do that and it worked out like a charm so do that if you're having a problem you can also download uh this template for the configuration file you can actually open it uh download it and put it in your givers 2 file you can see that how i have it how i don't have it right here actually i'm gonna download it and i'm gonna show you one second <laughs> You go in here, go click the three little buttons, download, boom, then go in here. Oh, I already downloaded it. I just didn't move it. Uh, go in here, into this, go to Gilbert's 2, put it down here, uh, delete the one because I copied it now, and uh, then you enter it. So I didn't know it, guys. You know, sometimes not everything goes right in your video, and you have to improvise just like this. And then you're going to see how you have this entire failed notepad with many, many configurations. And you can go check all of them. It's really depending on what you want. But, and don't touch anything. You don't know what it does. Uh, but essentially, if you want to change anything, it, the explanation is at the top. You can just put after the equal, just put in here whatever you want to put um, to change the configuration, and then you'll be fi fine. For example, if I wanted... Uh, enable hdr and i didn't want it i just go in here and put false for example and be done or for example if i wanted more latency uh, i could go in here and put a number between 0 and 16 in here and then you're ready and then after you're done you close it you put save boom done it is that easy don't worry about it i know it's a lot of jargon you know but hey you can do it just read what it does configure it how you want and worst case scenario you delete it and you just use the default version of it now, there's an alternative installation with asynchronous shader patches, which is essentially a way for you to get your shaders faster. If you, if you don't know what a shader is, it's kind of complicated, but essentially every time there's a graphical update to your graphics card or to the game, the graphics card will have to re-render the game. Uh, if you're having a lot of micro starters once you install this, this is why. So you want to install this uh, version of it, just do the same thing. You go download this one in particular, uh, go into the Git lab repository download this release instead 
the package right here. And then you do the same thing we did before. You download these uh, files. You rename this if you want to pair it with Nexus or with RDPS. You put them in the directory. And if you're in NVIDIA, as I said before, because, well, I was having these issues, you go into BIN64 and BIN64CF CEF as well. Uh, if you want the template file to change the configuration, same thing. You download it right here and you're done. If you want to update it, just download, go to the same website, same Git, uh, GitHub, download the same files and replace them with the new ones. The dxgi.dll and then d3d11.dll. Remember, if you do the chain load, rip, rename this to chain load before you actually uh, change it because otherwise you're going to be just replacing and updating the nexus which doesn't really make sense so there you go if this instruction worked correctly on the first launch you should notice that two new uh files will exist in your in your folder this one's right here you can see that i actually uh have them right here the gilbert's 264 dxi log and then the d3d11 log they're right here so obviously it did work and if you want to un uninstall it just go and delete the files you can also delete the logs as well if you want to uh, and also remember for nvidia delete the ones in bin 64 and bin 64 cf here they tell you what you can expect from it uh, essentially honestly just go try it if it works good if it makes it better good if it doesn't doesn't matter just don't uninstall it boom 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 if you have any problems with this troubleshooting you can ask me or you can ask the person that actually did this there on the reddit i'll leave the uh reddit thread right here so you can just comment on it and he always responds and then you go that's all i have for you today all the things that right now are working for me at least to make a better fps i'm streaming on a laptop guys i have a laptop i don't even have a pc uh i move around a lot so doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, get a big PC. And also, I don't have that much money. So it is what it is. <laughs> but regardless, this is the way I do it. The way I get a better FPS on a setup that is not perfect for Guild Wars 2. And some of these things like the scaling can be applied for other games as well. Not only Guild Wars 2. You can play WoW, any other MMO, uh, better FPS. Man, you can play, well, if Bloodborne was on PC, you could do that. If only Bloodborne was on PC with 30 FPS, you can upscale to 60 but sadly that doesn't happen so i guess it is what it is regardless it's a good feature i hope it works for you and uh well tell me what you guys think tell me if it works tell me if it didn't and if you need a, my help leave a comment down below go to my twitch watch me live you can ask me right there about anything and uh yeah see you guys around go to my ko -fi if you want to support my content go to my uh twitch to watch me live and uh see you guys around love you bye bye